I am here with one of the happier people in the world right now, probably among the you know top two or three percent of the happiest people in the world right now, like I am, as we watch the stock just continue up and up and up as if there's no like there's no top. Is there a top, Ryan? <laughs> is, is there? <clears throat> That's a beauty. When you short a stock, uh, your losses are infinite. Uh, yeah. But if you just buy and hold, uh, if a stock goes to zero, your your losses are not infinite. They are capped at whatever you put in. Yeah. Uh, but but up has more potential than down. Yeah, I mean it, it can go up another. It can more than double, but it can only go to zero. That's true of any stock. Yeah. Well, I've never shorted a stock in my life. It's it's, <clears throat> it's kind of against my DNA. I'm kind of the, you know, as the optimist of the decade, according to the club I once belonged to called the Optimist Club, um, you know, thinking about it in terms of <laughs> betting against the company. No, just not. It's not going to work for me. Well, there are companies that I bet against, but I don't do it by shorting. I do it by not investing. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's yeah. right. Yeah, safer, much safer. Right. I look at a company and I say, boo, that doesn't make sense to me. And sometimes I'm right and sometimes I'm wrong. Well, Brian, um, I had a, a video yesterday that blew up um, mm. my best day ever on X. Wow. And um, it was all about the different uh, guesses. I mean, I'm sorry, the, uh, the uh, price targets that people are starting to set right now <laughs> within our community and outside of our community, depending on how you consider Dan Ives and others kind of in our community and yet not. Um, but uh, people are adjusting their price targets. So Dan is now, depending on which sentence you read, he's either at 400, which is his official price target, but he also said the company could go to two trillion in valuation, which would be six hundred dollars within eighteen months or so. So that was that's a pretty high valuation. I'm at seven hundred dollars for the end of next year. Um, Cern Basher. He said uh, the stock is worth a thousand right now. This mm. minute, <clears throat> mortgage your house and buy it all, Cern. That's right. <laughs> so where are you? Oh, and then there's Gary Black, who has not yet moved his uh, price target, uh, even though the stock is now fifty dollars higher than its price target. Anyway, how do you how do you come out on all this? What do you think about all these changes? What do you think about the future of Tesla's price uh, over the next twelve months or so? What are you thinking about? I saw the Wedbush note. It said, uh, yeah, we've adjusted our price target up. Oh, really? Now that it's gone up, you've adjusted your price target up. What's changed, Dan? What's changed? And I'm sure in his note, he will come up with some kind of justification. But we're talking Psychic Friends Network level diagnostics here. These technicians are magnificent. Uh, if you have conviction, show it. Uh, when James Stevenson wished to purchase uh, Tesla stock, uh, he didn't have the money except in his retirement, according to a video he recently made. And he said that he had to go out and borrow against his retirement in order to purchase Tesla stock because the company he works for doesn't allow individual stock purchases within the 401k. So that's, uh, that is conviction. And that's what he did in, I don't know, 2018. It's worked out. Okay. <laughs> But I'm not here to do a victory lap on the people who didn't see what I saw. Uh, I'm not a sore winner. Sore winners are gross. Uh, we get it. Uh, good job, Billy. Uh, our team won. Right. But you're not the shortstop. So you're just one of the viewers, one of the spectators. So what I always told people is uh, you miss the boat and it sucks. But I assure you. The boats are scheduled regularly. Uh, you can always catch the next boat. Uh, and they, you know, the, the age old problem, Randy, you, we can't, I wanted to, I really want to buy it, but I can't buy it now because it's gone up too much. And I can't buy it now because it, it's going down. Guys, <laughs> dollar cost average. I don't know what to tell you. The only reason I see this as having a potential of being quite sticky is because, and sticky as in staying power, is because uh, institutional funds and retirements, pensions are still underweight Tesla as a percentage of their portfolio. Right. And at at some point, you, you need to balance that out. And 
The retail investors are uncommonly ride or die. I do know some fairly big investors uh, who have sold some or all of their positions recently um, for various reasons, uh, but that uh, doesn't seem to be having much impact. I mean, someone has to sell. If there are buyers, people say, oh, the stock went up because there's more buyers than sellers. Would you believe it's the an equal number? Hmm. Well, more buy, more demand than there is of available supply at that given second. At that given price. Right. That so given- it's a price change. It's a balances again. Yeah. The number of shares sold equals the number of shares bought. Every- it's amazing how it works. <laughs> it's a tie once again. So this morning I said that there was a new, um, a new, well, it's not new, but I think it will be something that will impact the street. It'll impact uh, institutional investors. Uh, it'll impact even retail investors and even new investors that might be looking at Tesla for the very first time. And the obvious one of those, of course, is Elon's big victory last week in the political election. <laughs> election and how in, Elon's win in the election. And how and how that's impacting, of course, his world, his his prominence, if you will, his uh, mm. uh, and and potentially, you know, the the benefits in terms of. Uh, not having so much pressure from uh, some of the administrators who have been giving Tesla and other mm. companies, this companies hard time, but that's the easy one. Everybody got that day one. I mean, did they? Well, I'm, let's say that everybody talked about it day one. I don't know whether they got it or not. Yeah. Well, what I mean is, weren't they good friends before the last time he was elected, and it soured pretty quickly? That's my concern. Is yeah. is is this going to be like the Technology Council? He was added to that he was like uh that was a big deal that met once never got anything accomplished and no one even bothered to read their notes that's my concern yeah i think what happened last time was a very uh elon was still at that point uh politically uh to the left he had not made his shift uh he was still very much focused on the the original mission which has now moved a little bit okay yet we the mission still exists of uh, 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 accelerating the the uh, future of uh, of of uh, sustainable sustainable energy that's it thank you very much there you go. those that's still in there that's still a mission but because of robotics and because of the new optimus and whatnot there's the, the, there's been a little bit of a shift in the emphasis um and now it is a robotics company or a AI company that specializes in robotics. So there's been a, a shift, but also there's been a shift in Elon's political views. And he's talked about that shift very specifically. So I, I think he's in a different place in terms of how the relationship is. And clearly it's a very, very close at this point relationship. But I'm not even interested that much in that part, as much as I think it's important. And I think it will impact the future of Tesla stock. And I think it's impacting the stock now as people look at it and go, oh, that makes the stock worth more. I'm thinking that people will finally begin to realize if they haven't already, never bet against Elon. N-B-A-E. I think it's going to have a hashtag in front of it. Are people still doing those? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it'd be your, you don't have to argue with me on that one. So uh, the, the point I'm making is, is that the very people I just, the list I just gave you, the, the new retail investors, people that have never looked at Tesla before, are the vehicle before, um, uh, the, the uh, investors on the street that might have been negative on uh, on, on Tesla, uh, and the institutional investors that may or may not have been a, a negative or positive, all of them are having to take a second look. Like it doesn't matter what this guy touches, it turns to gold. And there's a tendency for people to want to get aboard those trains. Hmm. All right. Uh, I'm not sure what, uh, is there a question there? Oh, I, I was just going to say, what is that worth? You what know, is it worth? In terms of stock price. Um, look, I saw this tweet the other day. It was really good. It said that Elon just got lucky, you know, <laughs> When you, you toss a coin, you say heads and it's heads. You do that another 10, 20, 500 times. And every time you call it, that's not luck anymore, is it? Uh, so 
Well, but he, you know, he he was born rich, Randy. Anyone who was born rich becomes the richest man alive. Didn't you know that? Yeah, every time. Every time. That's that's just how it works. And by the way, he was born upper middle. He was raised upper middle class. Upper middle class. Sometimes. Maybe Not maybe all. the what? Sometimes Would, upper middle class. When he yes. moved to Canada, he was just uh, middle class. A, a poor schlub. If you, I would not prefer to be rich in South Africa. I believe I had a better upbringing being middle class in the U.S. Right. There, there were more opportunities there for me. But uh, yeah, I think that uh, a lot. If he announced today that he was going to be making a perfume called Burnt Hair, people would buy it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's take let's uh, let's start over a little bit. Let's let's come back and really talk about Brian White instead of what Randy's thinking. So, what does Brian White think? Where do you have a price target in your head? Do you have a do you have an expectation in terms of how big a year twenty twenty five is going to be and how that might impact the stock over the next uh, twelve months? Uh, no, I don't, because I have a longer term horizon. When you said at the start of the show, we're both very, very excited. I thought, well, I'm kind of excited. This isn't real money to me yet. Just like when the losses hit, I don't get sad. They're not real losses. If I was going to be sad at 150 or 200 or 130 recently, not that long, less than two years ago, um, then I guess I'd be entitled to be doing a little happy dance, but it's not real money yet. This is a short-term thing. Maybe this is the new normal. Maybe this is just a sugar rush. Uh, the fundamentals in the long run are all that matter. Do you believe the company is going up? I think 2025 could be a rough year. I don't necessarily think we're looking at monumental growth in 25 because we know the robo taxi isn't coming until at the earliest, the end of 25, Cyber cab, not until 26. But if those do arrive as expected, hold on to your butts. The same with uh, the real benefits of a lot of the things they're doing. Mega factory Shanghai isn't going to be fully ramped <laughs> and fully ramped is not really a thing with Tesla nameplate ramped. We, I guess you could say in Shanghai until the end of 25. So I think 25 could be a rough year, but considering how much the stock has gone up, I would love to sell some and buy something else where I see more upside. I just don't know of anything. Yeah, yeah. There are there are some things out there that are actually tempting me right now. Palantir happens to be tempting me. But I read I read I read, I read one post on X yesterday that said every time I diversify away from Tesla stock, I lose. <laughs> so all we so perfect. So all we need to do is encourage that person to diversify away from Tesla and then the rest of us just hold. Yeah, no, I'm saying he was saying he loses. Right. He loses, but we don't, we got to get him to diversify. We stay in. So we, Randy, to... come on. Think here. Keep up, huh? Keep up. Yeah. So, okay. So you have no, uh, you have no theory. I don't do price targets because uh, I, it's astrology I and uh, I'm, okay, I'm no think... Nostra dumbass. All right. So you I have, don't remember how you oh, say nothing it. Nothing in your head. There's nothing, nothing rattling around up there. Nope. That, I think it'll probably get to a thousand and then bounce back. That'd be no. cool. <laughs> All right, nothing then. All right, okay. Listen, I you know I'm just trying to I'm just trying to. I I stay where my proficiencies are, nope. and I think that's why you uh, appreciate my contributions. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I will I, say that Brian Wang does masterful work and every now and then he will politely uh drop me a direct message saying by the way here's what's actually going on in the stock market and here's where the short squeeze layers are and all that and i'm like oh wow thank you <laughs> it's really fun yes it is yes it is in fact uh brian of course he was one of the first to say that he thought by the end of next year we would be potentially be well above my 700 target so mm. i can't remember his final number, but I want to say it was on the order of a thousand or more. 700 sounds crazy folks. And if you believe that at home, think of how crazy it sounded a month ago. What? It sounds a little less crazy now, huh? A little less crazy. And it, who knows by end of year, we could be at a thousand and we could all be dressed in shirts like Randy. It could happen. So it could. One, last, one, one last thought, one last thought. This I think something you and I've talked about before. But I think that maybe, again, this is a changing perception. Well, you know what? Let's leave that for tomorrow's show. All right. 
the teaser will be something on the order of will Tesla's begin to completely sell out of every make and model as fast <laughs> as they can make them even before FSD is um, mm. feature, if not feature complete, what do you call it? Uh, unsupervised. So mm -hmm. it, are, there, are there forces at work which may cause every single model that they can possibly make in the next three, four, five months to be just sold out regardless of FSD unsupervised? That I have thoughts on that, Randy. Do you really? I, you'll, you'll have to wait until tomorrow because, yes, I do. And I think you're going to find some good value there. <laughs> All right, good. All right, well, we'll leave it at that point then, Brian. Thanks, as always, for being on. And uh, for all of you out there, it's been great talking to you.